Um, I'll let you know when it's running, just one sec. Are we muting until we're asked? I find it helps with feedback or back feed or whatever the, the noise, but it, it depends on your computer. If you don't find that it's an issue, then. Okay, you're on live now. Okay, and I'll call a special meeting by our town council for Tuesday, April 14th, 2020, to order at 3.05 p.m. Roll calls, please. Councillor McGee? Here. Councillor Toner? Here. Councillor Grinstead? Here. Councillor Strike? Here. County Councillor Lynch? Here. And Mayor Walter Stack? Here. An adoption of the agenda. What about, excuse me, what about me? Oh. Councillor Burnett? Here. <laughs> I just wait for her to call me last. And You're putting me out in left field. Okay, so an adoption of the agenda, please. Be it resolved that the agenda for the special meeting of council dated Tuesday, April 14th, 2020, be adopted. Mover and a seconder, please. See Lisa and Lynn, all in favor? Carried, thank you. Do we have any disclosure of pecuniary interest? Seeing none. An adoption of uh, the minutes, please. That the minutes of the regular and special meetings of council listed under items 5A and B on the agenda be adopted. Mover and seconder, please. So I see Tom. I think that's Chris behind that hand. Chris, yeah. Okay. All in favor? Harry, thanks. Then uh, the staff report uh, by the CAO on COVID 19. That council received the following report as information and that council authorized the cancellation or postponement of town planned public events up to June 30th, 2020. Move in a second, please. Lisa, Lynn, hey, Robin. Thank you, sir. We're going to bring up the presentation on the screen so, uh, so that, let me just see here. I don't see that as an option for me to share that page, Jen. Okay. So tell me, does everybody see the slideshow? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, great. I think this is going to work well. Um, so. Welcome back. Uh, we haven't had a council meeting for a full month or a little, a little under a month, I should say. Uh, and council you know, has gotten some updates from staff over time through emails and, and messages and um, uh, quotes, you know, updates from the mayor that have been published online. But we thought it would be an opportune time to give council an update on sort of the activities that, um, that staff are, are undergoing at the town. Uh, and to bring you up to speed on those things. It's hard to believe that it was uh, March 13th, so just a month and a day ago that we closed our cultural and uh, recreational facilities, both the uh, museum, library, and Nick Smith Center to the public, and then shortly thereafter closed our town hall to the public. So um, quite a bit has gone on in a month, um, and so we thought we'd take this chance to, to bring you up to speed. For the purposes of doing this uh, through this video chat, I think it's probably best if you could hold your questions to the end, um, but I leave that to you, Mayor Stack, if you want to uh, try and, and watch for hands being raised. Yeah, it's I, a mean, bit of background. I, I only see three other videos besides yeah. myself here, so at the end, it'll be better. Yeah, okay. Um, so again, um, we did uh, meet with council on March 25th uh, and we gave a couple of reports, just uh, some quick updates at that time uh, as, as things were progressing. Uh, first of all, a temporary me financial measures report and you will see on tonight's agenda some bylaws around uh, moving forward with those financial, um, financial measures that council addressed that night. Uh, the business continuity plans from a staff perspective were presented, uh, some communication plans just to let council know how we were getting our messages out, and then the economic development update as well. And we'll continue uh, through this report to sort of update on, on each of those as well. Um, the provincial state of emergency and emergency orders were expend, extended this week, this past week to April 23rd and the schools remain closed to May 4th. We know uh, the Ontario legislature has been meeting today um, and they were putting their minds to extending that emergency for 28 days instead of, um, uh, of the tw till the, only till the 23rd. So I'm not sure if we have an answer on that yet, but it looks like it may be going to mid-May now anyway. 
Um, again, our message for, for council and, and the residents of Iron Empire has continued to be that our, our town hall and uh, town staff are continuing to provide our essential services and that staff are working from home where possible to, um, to mitigate the spread of this disease. With respect to the meetings, as I said, um, we have had a special meeting already, and we will continue to hold special meetings at the call of the mayor. All regular council and committee meetings at this point have been canceled. Um, and we're hoping that with the uh, bringing on more technology as far as the electronic meetings, we may be able to have meetings where we have a bit more public participation. As you'll notice on our special meeting agendas, we haven't uh, included delegations or question periods at this point. Um, but uh, as we move forward, we're hoping to be able to reintroduce those to the, um, to the agendas. Uh, and I just, I put this under meetings just because it is council's event that we hold um, every year, the annual volunteer appreciation event. And it was scheduled for uh, April 26th, uh, which is volunteer appreciation week. And we have postponed that. We have um, advised uh, that the, uh, the invitees that hopefully we'll be able to hold that another time this year. With respect to communications, I think it's important to note that we continue to focus on sharing the messages of other agencies, such as the Renfrew County District Health Unit, the province and the federal government. Those are the organizations sort of in charge of this emergency as far as the health pandemic. And we feel it's important to continue to uh, help uh, do our part by sharing their, their information to the public and to the, our residents. So we have, of course, our Empire Life uh, Facebook page our, at our Empire Twitter account. Our, um, our own app uh, that we recommend everybody uh, download onto their phones. And then the uh, COVID-19 page on our website where we uh, provide links to all that information, our own press releases and, uh, and multiple resources. But again, we keep sharing the message from those organizations as far as um, what you should be doing to stay safe and, and what our residents should be doing if they have uh, health concerns. So all that information is there. We have been uh, participating in uh, public service announcements on my FM radio this past week, as well as Valley, Valley Heritage Radio. Um, we felt it was important to use that medium as well to help share the message. It's not, um, it's just another form of, of communication that we thought um, some of our residents may make more use of than even the internet. And uh, again, our media releases and the weekly message from the mayor are being shared uh, through our normal channels to the press uh, on our website and pushed out through our social media. So we continue to do that and we will continue to monitor how those, um, how effective they are and whether we need to, um, to continue on or do any, any additional uh, notifications. With respect to the finance department, so I'm going to go through the departments a little bit, let you know where, where we're at with most of them. Uh, the financial department, so again, all our financial services are still being provided as usual, payables, receivables, our utility billing went out, payroll is still being uh, processed, bank reconciliations are being done. If people have bills to pay, they know that they can either drop off uh, checks in our drop box at the town hall or pay online. Um, and that hasn't changed as a result of the closure of the office. We are working on the audit um, and that typically happens uh, in March and April of the year uh, in order to meet our FIR requirement deadlines. So we're going to, con we're continuing to do that. It's all happening online this year to um, the auditors visiting the office, but we're providing them with the information they need so it can keep going. And again, our finance department is, fin is working under our business continuity plan. So um, staff are working uh, at home and at the office as needed um, to make sure that those uh, services continue to be provided. Uh, with respect to bylaw enforcement, uh, under the Emergency Measures and Civil Protection Act, fines have been set by the province and those are uh, in place to ensure compliance with any orders that have been issued by the province. Those include things like price gouging, uh, staying out of uh, parks, those kinds of uh, orders. And so the OPP and the bylaw, um, municipal bylaw officers have been empowered by the province to enforce those act and acts and to uh, issue fines as needed. We are um, asking the OPP to respond to any calls for service and um, encouraging them to provide education in order to encourage compliance. And they will call all on our bylaw enforcement for assistance as they're required, as they require that assistance. But really um, incidents had been fairly low. We know over the last week, um, increased in incidents of um, graffiti have happened in town. So we're looking at that. Uh, we're encouraging people to please stay home, 
please behave. <laughs> but um, anyway, th those groups are, are uh, out there enforcing, enforcing the orders as they come out from the province. Under the fire services, I think it's important for council to know that they are working under a, the business continuity plan um, to ensure that there are adequate numbers for response. They've broken into group A and group B and they are uh, available for any, any emergency that happens. Uh, and staying safe in the meantime. They have um, protocol in place for uh, ensuring that the, any location they go into is safe and they have, um, of course, proper protective uh, equipment to ensure their own safety. They are not meeting uh, weekly for their group training as they usually do, but they are doing online training. And um, of course, as I said, strict measures are in place to ensure safety at all times. With respect to the operations department, firstly, the uh, water and wastewater roads and engineering areas, I wanted to make sure council is aware that, uh, you know, essential services, of course, are still operating water, wastewater, roads, vehicle maintenance is happening, facility maintenance as needed, and cemeteries and uh, uh, utility locates are going on. Uh, we're providing the service that needs to be provided in a safe manner. The spring sidewalk and street sweeping is underway. You may have noticed that already in the downtown. and. Uh, you know, we're continuing with developing our tenders, doing our annual, re annual reporting, doing inspections and uh, dealing with waste management as needed. And that's under the business continuity plan as well. At the facilities, uh, things are still happening on a smaller scale, of course. The Mixmas Center is close to the public. Uh, we've taken this opportunity while the public is not in the facility to go ahead and close both ice surfaces. We do that every year at this time. We managed to do it a little earlier this year as a result of the closure. We also drain the pool. This is something that we do every September for maintenance, but because again, it's not being used at this time, uh, we thought it would be prudent to do it now uh, and avoid having to do it again in September when hopefully our programs uh, will be back up and running. We've done some maintenance work there, including ceiling tile replacements, painting, some deep cleaning, um, the floors, stripping, waxing, and cleaning those while there's nobody around. So that this has been a good opportunity to get some of that work done. All of our facilities are being monitored, even if they're closed. Um, for example, the museum is closed. We've lowered the thermostat, which is actually better for the um, artifacts. The lights have been turned off. So, you know, we're, we're, we're keeping an eye on those facilities, make sure that they're uh, safe uh, during this time but they are uh, close to the public. As far as um, the closure of outdoor uh, recreational amenities, excuse me, uh, in accordance with the Ontario regulation that um, the order that came down to close any outdoor recreational amenities, we've gone ahead and closed um, the uh, playgrounds, structures and equipment there. We've put up signs, we've uh, used caution tape to try and keep people off of things. We've locked gates. The ball diamonds are closed, the soccer fields, the tennis and basketball courts, our skateboard park, uh, community gardens, picnic sites, shelters, the marina, and, and of course, uh, we won't be opening the beaches. We will not be putting in the docks at the marina at this time. We will, you know, of course, monitor how that goes forward uh, as the days get warmer, but at this point, we have no plans to, to go ahead and do that. Um, park maintenance plans are being prepared. Obviously, the grass is not gonna stop growing over this, so, um, we are looking at how we're going to manage uh, that, that, that maintenance over the next couple of months. Uh, the purchase of flowers for parks facilities in our downtown core is under review. Of course, um, they were a huge success last year and they really um, can brighten the area, but at this point we're, we're holding off on, uh, on moving forward until we determine whether, whether we can. <coughs> Under waste management, as you're aware, we closed the landfill site. Um, we are asking residents to please store larger items at home uh, and to consider other facilities, uh, such as we know the Tomlinson Waste Recovery Center in, on Carp Road has been open to the public. Um, you know, it's, a, it's a, hopefully a short time that this will impact people, um, but we appreciate their patience in storing those items uh, until we can open again. Garbage collection, um, of course, being provided as, as usual. We've increased the curbside collection uh, limit per household of two bags up to four bags without any need to purchase any tags because the office is closed and we can't, can't sell, uh, sell tags at this time. And we re recognize a lot of people are at home uh, during this time and perhaps uh, creating a little more garbage than they normally would. So we're hoping that that assists people and we appreciate that the uh, they uh, don't take advantage of that system, but, um, but find some relief. 
The spring and uh, leaf and yard waste collection will proceed as planned on May 13th. Um, we understand that it's the weather is cooperating. Uh, people will start to have those uh, those needs as well. So that is planned on uh, Wednesday, May 13th. From a recreational perspective, uh, from a programming perspective, obviously uh, the spring registration was postponed on March 16th and all programming was postponed indefinitely. Um, we regret this, of course, but um, as necessary. We um, have done some stuff to try and help keep our residents active and entertained during this time when we can't provide programming. So there is a recreation at home webpage that people can um, um, log on to on our website and we encourage you to do that. It's chock full of fun things to do, um, at home workouts, uh, art challenges, artifact challenges from the museum, maybe some virtual tours being shared and lots of uh, resources that people can log into if they're looking for things to do and ways to keep, uh, keep amused. Uh, we have had to postpone events, as we mentioned in the recommendation, and I've provided just a, a list here for council if anybody's asking any questions about what are, are uh, postponed or canceled. Uh, the Rock and Splash Pool Party was coming up on the 14th. Prior Palooza, um, generally on the June 6th weekend, and then the train show with it on June 6th and 7th, that will be uh, postponed or canceled. The Participation Community Better Challenge in June, we're suggesting we don't excuse me, we didn't find out about the grant of, for that yet at any rate, um, but we're suggesting it, it probably cannot be uh, accommodated appropriately. Concerts in the park start uh, Sundays uh, after prior Palooza, so the June 14th to June, uh, or August 16th um, dates. Uh, we're definitely canceling the June dates for now and we'll, um, we'll talk about July and August if, if necessary. The Schools Out Beach Party on June 27th, unfortunately, has to be canceled, as well as um, we're recommending that the Ottawa Valley Cycling Association um, Trail Safety Event on June 27th will likely be delayed. And um, we had been working with the Sense Foundation uh, on, this, on the rink launch, and we had planned a day on April 15th to um, launch that in our community, but we've postponed that as well, obviously. And I think it's important to note that a lot of these um, events take a lot of pre-preparation. And um, so the difficulty is uh, doing that work now, um, you know, means that, that we can't, uh, can't adequately prepare for these, for these events, even, even though they seem a long way off. From a planning and development perspective, I want to counsel to know that um, we have done quite a few building permits in 2020 to date. Uh, we've issued 70 permits and of those 57 were new housing starts. So it has been a busy year already. Um, on April 3rd, things changed with respect to the essential services order. And it means that only uh, residential development that already had building permit um, could, could it continue on. Uh, and be, uh, be underway. So um, we have stopped issuing permits for new construction. Uh, inspections are now ongoing for those existing permits that had been issued. So there's still um, inspections happening. And of course we're uh, exercising all safety precautions when doing that. The Grove Nursing Home redevelopment, I just wanted to highlight that. Um, it did uh, start construction uh, over the past couple of weeks. You've probably noticed more construction happening out on that site as a healthcare facility. And because of course it had building permit already, uh, it definitely fits under the essential services list and, uh, and is ongoing. So um, our chief building official will be doing undertaking inspections of that as, as the construction progresses. With respect to the planning side of things, Council will recall we had two uh, statutory public meetings scheduled uh, as a result of uh, applications that Council had received just before COVID. So uh, they both have been postponed. One was for the Baskin Drive subdivision, official plan amendment and zoning bylaw amendment, and the other was for 260 Elgin Street, uh, the zoning bylaw amendment there. So. Uh, we have been um, waiting for some guidance and direction from the Ministry of Municipal Affairs on holding public meetings. Because public meetings are really intended to allow the public a chance to speak to council on matters that are of concern to them, it's of utmost importance that we be able to provide uh, a way for that to happen. And at this point, uh, we aren't too comfortable doing that, especially um, you know some of the more contentious issues. You wanna make sure that the public has a chance to speak. So. In my discussions most recently with municipal affairs, um, I understand that that direction and guidance is, is forthcoming. So hopefully we'll have an update uh, for council on that shortly. 
Um, the other thing to note is that LPAT um, has canceled all their current hearings. So even if we held a meeting and somebody wanted to appeal it, um, there are delays at LPAT um, and, and things aren't moving through there either. Uh, and I just wanted to note, I didn't get this into the report to council because it happened rather um, rather quickly at the end of last week or beginning of the week before, but the county official plan has been finally approved in its totality. I think council remember that parts of it were approved at one point and some of it was delayed. Um, there will be some impacts on the town um, and we have not had a chance to really have a good look at those, but there will be a report to council coming forward shortly on, on the impacts of that, but I want council to be aware. With respect to economic development, um, as I said, the essential service list from the province uh, is a bit of a moving target. <laughs> it did change again and it decreased some of the other retail uh, storefronts that were allowed to be open to the public, including things like hardware and pet food stores. So only online sales for those businesses, businesses now as well as the other retail that was already uh, on the list. Uh, so you may have noticed some changes to the, some of the businesses in town. On April 6th, the Chamber of Council holds did a Zoom meeting for their members and that was pretty well attended. It was a chance for them to share some ideas and some thoughts around how they're handling the crisis. Um, and our, our economic development officer sat in on that. Uh, the Renfrew County Economic Development Services are asking businesses to fill in an online COVID-19 business survey so that they can help uh, understand some of the impacts COVID is having across our, um, our county. And I encourage people to, uh, to go online and do that. We uh, are still working with our Digital Main Street Squad. This is the uh, grant we received from the BIA Association of Ontario to help downtown business owners. Uh, and really this is right up the Reagan wheel is, uh, is making sure that businesses are uh, online savvy as it were. So they're continuing to work with some of our business owners to ensure that they have those resources. And uh, just a note on the food, um, the farm, the Sunday market, um, because Foom Fart, Farm food vendors, oh, that's a bit of a tongue twister. Uh, they can still sell at their farm gate and they can do online sales, but we can't hold our Sunday markets um, due to the restrictions on having people uh, congregate. So we've delayed or, or canceled our Sunday markets at least uh, for the, um, the June period, May and June period. Capital project wise, I just wanted to note that uh, 2020 capital projects are all being reviewed to determine their priority and ability to move forward at this point. This has uh, obviously budget implications uh, that we're looking at very closely before we move forward and make recommendations to council. They are, you know, some of them impacted by the essential services regulations that have come out, uh, especially surrounding construction. And we'll talk about that with council as well. Um, concerns around delay change, delay, delays of supply chains for uh, our contractors, and again, and again, even market uncertainty around uh, but bid prices and that kind of thing. So we're keeping an eye on all of that, and we will be reporting to council a bit more on that those issues. Um, at this point, I want to get into a bit of the financial, and I'm going to ask Jennifer Morowick, the uh, treasurer, to speak to the financial projections that she's provided on the next couple of slides things that council should be considerate of. Jennifer? Thanks, Robin. Um, I do want to throw a, a few caveats uh, at the forefront of this. Um, with COVID-19, you know, this really has been, you know, unprecedented and we really do have a lot of uncertainty. So I, I do want to throw that caveat on there that a lot of um, estimates went into what these financial impacts were, um, knowing that, you know, some of these estimates could change rapidly over the next few weeks. Um, but I really did feel it was imperative that we did try and provide uh, council with some, at least some bare bones numbers uh, to be able to give you a feel for um, that we do have some escalating um, cost impacts um, that are happening, um, obviously due to the, the global pandemic. Um, so what I did was I tried to get a quick um, projection for uh, where we sat in March. And then I tried to project out uh, a little bit of what April, May, and June um, could look like uh, based on, um, on some assumptions and projections. So you'll see those revenue impacts flowing across March, April, May, and June. And I do want to just, just clarify, those are cumulative. So it adds on to it. So, you know, it would grow to 325 um, by June, um, those revenue impacts. It wouldn't be um, 325 on top of the other months. So they, they do add up together. 
Um, so some of those revenue impacts would be things like lost revenues from um, Commissioner of Oaths, you know, marriage licensing, um, um, you know what I mean? And most of it, I would say the mass majority would be from that lack of user fees uh, coming in from uh, recreational programming. Uh, now the mitigation measures implemented, so council has already made some um, uh, mitigation measures. For example, we've already reduced some of the part-time staffing. Um, and we're also have done taken some steps in some of the facilities to um, you know, lower the temperatures and things like this, and we'd be using less chemicals. Um, so we have a bit of cost savings there. So you can see that for this, for levy dollars, uh, we are looking for that protected financial impact. Uh, we'll grow to about $190,000 of um, of impact by the end of June is what we're projecting out. We'll get you to go to the next slide, Robin, if that's okay. Um, and then if we look at um, self-sustaining cost centers, so I, I, the two here that we're kind of showing up was with the landfill closure, uh, we, we are gonna have some of those um, uh, lost revenues uh, that will build over, over time. Um, however, we will look at trying to reduce some expenses um, on, on that end. And also on the water wastewater side, um, I had to use a lot of estimates in these projections. So now that we have a couple more weeks of data over the next couple of weeks, I will be able to amend these um, to be able to see how close we're, these projections are coming out. But um, by end of March, we did have our consumption levels were down about 15%. Um, so I projected out forward on what kind of impact that would be across our water and wastewater revenues um, on a go forward basis. Um, if that uh, same percentage were to, uh, were to continue. Uh, continue out. Um, however, uh, as staff, we are looking at all this and we are putting together some further uh, financial mitigation measures uh, for council to be considering to help offset some of these impacts. Um, I do also wanted to just flag for council, um, those projections I showed you were for 2020. Um, I do want to just highlight that for next year in 2021, we'll also be facing a few further impacts. Um, and that came from um, um, the notice that the 2020 property tax assessment updates will be postponed for 20. So what that means is next year um, in 2021, it'll be based on the 2020 values. Um, so what that really does is uh, we won't really have any sort of CBA uh, dollars coming in next year. And uh, in comparison, if you want to look at well, what were our CBA revenue uh, extra levy dollars uh, this year, they were about 125 K. Um, and also MPAC has, um, has contacted us um, municipalities and they're looking for alternate ways that they can go out and do property um, assessments and um, things like that while their field visits are restricted. But they have highlighted for us that while they will try and get as much growth as they can on the books uh, during this time period, we may also experience um, uh, an impact there. So uh, for a comparison for what that number could be for this year, our growth numbers were sitting around 138K. Uh, so we do just have to keep in mind um, that the impacts of COVID-19 will be felt not only in 2020, but they will also be felt forward in 2021 um, uh, with items such as this with the impact on the property taxes. Thanks, Jennifer. So, uh, so that sort of wraps up the, uh, the general uh, gist of the report and the different um, statuses that we're experiencing. The recommendation is just to receive this report for information, but it's also to cancel uh, or postpone events to June 30th. And I've just, again, put the list up of, of the events that we're talking about here, just so council has a, a sense of what we're talking about. And hopefully uh, hopefully that will be the list and, and it won't change, but um, those are the things that we have just recognized. And we're open for questions. So I'm gonna stop sharing this presentation so we can see each other, sorry. Dan, I saw you first. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Robin, with the uh, the bylaw, we were contacted by Enterprise. Those are the ten cars on Winner's Circle. Um, they're the of the opinion that the province has said they can park anywhere, anytime, for any amount of time. Uh, we have an email from Marine through uh, Jim saying that's not true. So just to let everyone know the 10 cars on Winter Circle are actually enterprise and the town is looking into it. That's, that's right. Thank you. So Lisa's next bit. Um, recognizing that, you know, there's good reason that the landfill is, is closed. Um, it, it's an essential service. Is there any way that we can either 
do a reduced uh, schedule or um, in the absence of that, provide some clear communications for residents on alternatives and where they can go because there does seem to be a number of questions and you know people do move they've got you know large items that won't be picked up curbside so uh, just to help mitigate those those frustrations that um, some people have with with it being closed yeah if I if I could um, we we definitely are looking at other uh, alternatives now that this has gone on a little bit of time um, we're looking at uh, you know the possibilities um, around uh, different alternatives so we will be reporting back to you on that we we uh, haven't lost sight of that. And we know that as it goes on, that the problem becomes more of an issue for people. Um, and we will certainly share the information we have as far as other alternatives now with Tomlinson's to people um, because they, they do seem to still be open. And we have shared that with some residents and we know they're being successful and, and uh, being cooperative about, about trying that. So we'll continue to do that for sure. I think that's sort of a tough one too, because if we're gonna do anything with the landfill, it means we're gonna to have to increase some costs there to do it. And we just heard a financial report that's going to make things pretty, pretty tight over the next few months. So whether it's a land or anywhere else, we need to consider the costs of any kind of decisions we make. You know? yeah. And part of the concern, you're absolutely right, um, is that it, it may actually be increasing some of our costs by not having it because um, I'm hearing of a lot of people who are doing, um, you know, curb dumps and things like that. And somebody's having to clean those up now my understanding is that more of that is happening sort of countryside so on the McNabb Bray side end of things rather than in town but you know it's all stuff that we have to consider for sure anybody else have a question chris um i'm just wondering um were were any of the savings uh for the uh for us not having any of those future um like the prior Palooza and any of the future festivals, uh, were any of those savings captured, Jennifer, in your in your um, financial table? Go okay, ahead, Jennifer. Oh, great, great question. Um, I haven't picked up all um, of those types of uh, expenses yet. A lot of the functions and events that we run, I'll take for example, like prior Palooza. Um, we actually um, obtain sponsorship dollars and things like that that actually offset the cost of it. Um, so some of those haven't been picked in because really they would be um, an in and an out. Um, now there are some, um, you know, we've only gone to June 30th, but let's say for example, um, if this did continue and we ended up, let's say postponing Canada Day, well then you would have, you know, some savings on the books of what we would normally spend on fireworks because that would be an event that we run that's not cost recovery. So um, all of those haven't gotten um, picked up in there, um, but the, a, a large number of those events, uh, we do operate on a cost recovery basis. So it would be a, most of them would be an in and an out. Yeah, I think the financial picture, Jennifer, you and your team, you're gonna have to look at it every month and, you know, and just see what changes are impacted and, and what uh, costs that's either made for us or savings it has and, and do the math every month to see just where we're going. Oh, absolutely. I think I think it's going to change weekly, <laughs> if yeah, not monthly, with how, how fast things are moving and how fast things are changing. So th that's why I, I wanted to give council a bit of a picture, but knowing that I will probably come back to you in a few weeks with new numbers that will be updated and, um, you know what I mean, may have different, uh, you know what I mean, different as, as estimates in it than what they're in there now. Yeah. My comment was to be supportive. I know it's changing daily even, but <laughs> I think if you can advise us on a monthly basis, <laughs> yeah, so we'll have some sense of where we're going, you know? Yeah, sounds but, good. Uh, but if you want to give it to us by the hour. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. okay. Anyone else? No, I have a couple of comments just uh, going through it because uh, with their uh, staff and I know they're starting sweeping, but there's another contract that I don't think should be you know, should result in a savings for us this year through the summer. If this ends up carrying through the summer, we have the equipment in the manpower to do our own sweeping without contracting out this year, you know, and that depends if June 30th becomes September 30th, you know, it's going to be flexible like that, this kind of things, you know. Uh, the, uh, I really, I appreciate the fact that the province has installed the power in green, but I really think we're sticking to the bylaw with an education approach to to this thing, I don't, you know, I don't think we want to get laying fines and causing, uh, you know, a disgruntled population over those kinds of things. If we 
you know, re repeated case is always an exception, but I really like the idea of the education approach first, you know. Uh, the only other thing was, and I know you're waiting for legislation, was public meetings. If there's some way to extend time periods but allow for written submissions so that if this does drag on, so that you know, those projects can at least go ahead, you know, it will be resolved. And I know you're waiting for provincial input there. You know. Okay, so nothing else, anyone? No, so uh, I guess we need to accept the report. We've got to move into seconder. All in favor? Good. Carrie, thanks. Thanks, Jennifer and Robin. Thank you. Got a correspondence package next? That the correspondence package number I 20 April 06 be received as information and filed accordingly. Move in seconder, please. Ed, Dan, any uh, comments? Everybody's read that stuff and we had probably had it sent to them a number of times, but most of it. All in favor? Carry it. Thank you. So then bylaws and resolutions. There's two of them. We're okay with running with both. Yeah. That the following bylaws be and are hereby enacted and passed. Bylaw number 7053-20, amend bylaw number 7031-20 interim tax levy, and bylaw number 7054-20 waive penalty requirement for water and wastewater billings. Move and second your please. Tom Lynn, any comments? All in favor? Carry, thank you. Resolution, please. Whereas on March 17th, 2020, a declaration of emergency was made by the province of Ontario pursuant to section 7.0.1 of the Emergency Management and Civil Protection Act. And whereas due to the COVID-19 coronavirus outbreak, all regular council and advisory committee meetings regularly scheduled have been suspended out of an abundance of caution and whereas once the province withdraws its emergency declaration and public health officials messaging changes with respect to social distancing, staff will work in consultation with the mayor and chief administrative officer to resume regular meetings as soon as possible. And whereas at a special meeting held on March 25th, 2020, council amended its procedure bylaw to allow for electronic participation during any period where an emergency has been declared to exist in all or part of the municipality under section four or 7.0.1 of the Emergency Management and Civil Protection Act. And whereas council deems it expedient to take every precaution to slow the infection of the pandemic and to ensure the health and safety of our community. Therefore, be it resolved that until such a time as council can resume to their regular council and committee meetings, special council meetings be held at the call of the mayor in consultation with the chief administrative officer electronically to support any time sensitive agenda items. Okay. Move in a second there, please. Lisa and Lynn, all in favor? Carrie, thank you. And we need to move into closed. That council move into closed session regarding three matters. One matter pursuant to section 239 2B of the Municipal Act 2001 to discuss a personal matter about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees, striking committee. And one matter pursuant to sections 239 2B and F of the Municipal Act 2001 to discuss a personal matter about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees and advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege, including communications necessary for that purpose, staffing, and one matter pursuant to sections 239 2F of the Municipal Act 2001, advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege, including communications necessary for that purpose, awarding of tender. Can you move in a second there, please? Ed, Dan, we need a couple minutes to um, Mr. Mayor? 